I'm Ollie Davis. Welcome to the Wrestle Talk News, where our top story today on the same week as All In, potentially the biggest pro wrestling show of all time, is news a major WWE star could defect to AEW. In about a month, yes, Edge, nope. Wrong Edge, this Edge, celebrated the 25th anniversary of his WWE career on the 18th of August episode of SmackDown, wrestling a great match against Sheamus, who is one of those who helped train Edge to return back in 2020. The show took place in Toronto, Edge's hometown, and was seen as a potential retirement, mostly because that's what Edge had been telling everyone for about a year, that he was going to retire at the 2023 summer show in Toronto. Wrestling Observer Radio reported Edge was hoping that show was going to be a summer slam, but Detroit got that instead, so Edge's potential last wrestling match ever was an episode of SmackDown, which is kind of fitting for the man who defined that show in the noughties. But despite Edge's longtime trainer Ron Hutchinson reportedly telling people recently Edge was going to retire, speculation and mania is now running wild that it wasn't Edge's wrestling career that's over. Maybe it's just the WWE part. Edge admitted he doesn't know about his long-term wrestling future in an interview with ET Canada leading up to his 25th anniversary show. This is the last match on my current contract, so I don't know. I honestly don't know. I probably won't know until I get to the locker room that night and decompress. Let all the anxiety and tension that I never used to have before I performed, I have now. He gave more details to Sportsnet's The Fan Morning Show, where he revealed, My contract is up at the end of September, meaning any next moves wouldn't be in time for a certain humongous wrestling show coming up soon. Fightful haven't been able to fully confirm that Edge's contract expires in September, but they do note his original deal, which presumably started on his WWE return in January 2020, 100 years ago, was probably extended due to the amount of time he missed due to injury. The torn triceps he suffered early in the pandemic that took him out for seven months. Following Edge's 25th anniversary show match, WrestleVotes posted, asked if anything changed post-show regarding the status of Edge going forward, Source said he hasn't signed a new deal as of now, and the feeling among creative and others is that of unknown. The ball is truly in his court. And Tony Khan wants Edge's balls. Balls. Edge was reportedly one of the big name free agents along with Chris Jericho and CM Punk that Khan approached before AEW launched in 2019, a meeting that might have prompted Edge to make his WWE return. Again, according to Fightful Select, Edge's name has apparently been a topic of conversation behind the scenes in AEW, even before he wrestled what could have been his last match on Friday. Another site's rumour says even internal speculation in WWE is that Edge ends up going to AEW. Sean mentions Edge's personal friendships with AEW talent Christian Cage and the World Tag Team Champions FTR, with Dax and Cash also helping him get back into ring shape ahead of his return. Edge is so fond of the two, in fact, he once used their real names, David and Daniel, in a WWE segment when telling Beth Phoenix to get some muscle at home in case Seth Rollins tries to invade their house. Dax posted a photo with Edge and Beth just several days before Edge's SmackDown match, apropos of nothing. As for the actual nature of how Edge could debut, it wouldn't be an all in, all out, or shake it all about. But perhaps AEW's big Arthur Ashe Grand Slam show on September 20th could work out time wise. And we've probably seen the last of Edge, as that's a WWE trademark name. So start mentally preparing yourself to cope with Copeland. Adam Copeland to AEW confirmed. How would you book Edge's debut in AEW? Tell me in a Texas Chainsaw Deathmatch against Jeff Jarrett in the comments down below. We contractually can't have Edge for all in, but two other AEW stars might be making their long-awaited return for the show. Santana and Ortiz, yay, I miss them. Oh no, but they also apparently don't talk to each other backstage. In my opinion, Santana and Ortiz are in the top five tag teams in AEW, but being in Jericho's inner circle faction never really let them break out on their own. We haven't seen Santana Tanner since he suffered an ACL injury in last year's Bud and Guts match, and Ortiz has only been around sporadically over the last few months. Fightful Select is now reporting though that Ortiz could be making an appearance at Sunday's All In show, as he was scheduled for a limitless wrestling event that same weekend, but he's since been pulled due to an AEW related obligation. Additionally, Fightful is also writing that Santana has now been cleared from his ACL injury and has been teasing a return to wrestling 
on social media. With Eddie Kingston and Blackpool Combat Club in the stadium stampede match at All In, who Santana on Ortiz both have history with, it's likely they could appear as cameos or even something more substantial in the chaotic stipulation. The only real dampener on this is that they're still not reportedly on great terms. Shortly before Santana was taken out with injury, he was already making cryptic posts about leaving AEW when his contract expired. And Conan, who is close with the two, has revealed on his podcast that they aren't on speaking terms. Speaking of not on speaking terms, don't worry, it's not about CM Punk segue. ECW legend The Sandman has revealed he hasn't been in contact with AEW about an appearance at Sunday's All In. Which is exactly what someone about to show up at All In would say! Following Sabu's random cameo at Double or Nothing, and Rob Van Dam's AEW debut earlier this month, complete with original Pantera entrance music, Tony Khan sure does love his ECW nostalgia. So Luke Owen has been non-stop fantasy booking The Sandman getting involved at All In in the office, purely so he can sing along to Metallica in the crowd. But Sandman has has revealed in a KNS WrestleFest virtual signing, I've never talked to anybody in AEW, just so you know. Then again, I don't even know if they'd have my phone number. I'm so far out of the business, it's crazy. Sam all in confirmed. Maybe Tony could get El Generico out of retirement from that orphanage he runs down now as a fun nostalgic. What do you mean he's Sammy Zayn? Up until this point, it was assumed El Generico, the mute luchador wrestler from ROH's late noughties, was a totally separate person to NXT and now WWE superstar Sammy Zayn. Despite similar moveset, body shape, chest hair, general gait, athletic ability. But now, in an interview with Out of Character, Zayn admitted. He was the man behind the Generico mask, saying, When I would wear a mask, there were times that the mask was tied too tight. You would see a tiny bit of my hair in the back, and when I would see that on screen, it would drive me crazy. In the interview, Zayn also speaks about his epic championship match against Roman Reigns at February's Elimination Chamber event in his hometown of Montreal, admitting it was a tough pill to swallow to come that close and not quite make it. I'd be lying if I said no, it didn't bother me at all. For sure, there was a part of me that had problems digesting that. I don't think I'm being controversial in saying this, but I'm not the chosen guy. While it was tough to not just lose, but recognize WWE don't, and possibly ever will see you at that level, main eventing night one of WrestleMania and winning the tag team championships with his best buddy Kevin Owens was a pretty good consolation prize. And thankfully KO looks good to go after a short time out with injury. Owens missed SummerSlam due to a rib injury, but reports had him wrestling both on Friday and Saturday night in six-man tag team matches for WWE, teaming with Sammy and Drew McIntyre against Imperium, where KO has been getting the win pinning Kaiser after a stunner. But that's not all that happened over the weekend. Here's my one-minute one-take recap of Saturday's AEW Collision. Kevin Kelly made his commentary return, now the G1's finished. I already miss you, Rick Abani. Samoa Joe came out for a squash match against the gold, Golden Vampire. No, not the latest Bullet Club gold member, but a gold body suit disguised CM Punk who attacked Joe and accepted his all-in challenge. Surely there was a better way to build this match. Jay White beat one of wrestling's most underrated performers, Dalton Castle. They cut a promo on Kenny Omega after, and then Juice Robinson and the Guns beat the Iron Savages in a six-man. Malachi Black threw away uh, Billy Gunn's boots? Who throws a shoe? That's my second Dustin Powers reference. Rue seemingly kicked out Preston Vance and Drillistico by Masked Man Kidnap. Uh, Big Samoa Joe TNA vibes there. Ricky Starks managed Big Bill, who squashed Derek Neal. Uh, Sting and Darby Allen attacked AR Fox at his training school for revenge. Willow Nightingale beat Diamante, complete with Mercedes Martinez and Chris Statlander interference. Powerhouse Hobbs squashed uh, Kevin Koo, then called out Miro for a hoss fight at All Out. And Darby Allen beat Christian Cage in the main event. But Luchasaurus and Cage beat down Allen afterwards. Oh ho! Two seconds on the clock, I believe. This is now my victory music. I used to hate this sound because it just reminded me of waking up. Now it's sweet, sweet success. But it isn't just all in this weekend. It's also the start of the new season of Wrestle League. Wrestle League, where you can compete against thousands of other wrestling fans and us, the Wrestle Talk and PFK teams, in wrestling show predictions. Predict every match from every major pay per view, and if you're at the top of the leaderboard at the end of the season, you'll win $250 of Amazon vouchers. Second and third place will receive $100 and $50 of Amazon vouchers, respectively. Sign up using the link in the description below and make sure to click the email subscribe button to ensure you don't miss a show.